In order for a process system to work properly, it must be closely controlled. Several types of control systems can be used. The processes that are carried out in industrial facilities are controlled by process control systems. Two types of process control systems are analog control systems and digital control systems. The main difference between the two is that a digital control system contains one or more computers and an analog control system does not contain a computer. The computers used in digital control systems are sometimes called process computers. These computers typically perform several general functions. Like a personal computer, a process computer uses data to provide the user with information. Process computers also provide process control action by directing the actions of controllers that control the values of process variables, or by controlling the values of process variables themselves. In addition, process computers can work with other devices to start up or shut down process systems. When a process computer performs functions such as these, operators have more time to concentrate on the overall process to make sure that it operates safely and efficiently. And part of ensuring that a process operates safely and efficiently is understanding how the process is controlled. One thing that analog and digital process control systems have in common is that they both contain process control loops. The controlling element directs the actions of devices in the control loop to keep the value of a process variable at or near set point. In most process control loops, a controller performs the functions of the controlling element. Two kinds of control loops are analog control loops and digital control loops. The main difference between these two kinds of control loops lies in the controlling element, or in other words, the type of controller that's used. An analog control loop contains an analog controller, while a digital control loop contains a digital controller. An analog controller typically uses mechanical devices to control the value of a process variable. For example, this analog controller uses a pressure sensing element, levers, and mechanical linkages. An analog controller can control the value of only one process variable at a time, so it can be part of only one control loop at a time. In contrast, a digital controller uses a built-in computer to control the value of a process variable. The computer does this by executing a set of instructions called a control program. The control program is stored in the computer's memory. Along with the control program, the computer's memory can store information associated with several control loops. Because the computer in a digital controller can store information about several control loops in its memory, the controller can be part of more than one control loop at a time. This means that one digital controller can control the values of more than one process variable at a time. Now, to control the values of process variables, analog controllers and digital controllers use different types of signals. An analog controller uses analog signals. An analog signal can take on any value between two extreme values. In a process system, it's common to see analog signals in the form of physical properties such as pressure, current, and voltage. On the other hand, a digital controller uses digital signals. A digital signal consists of electrical pulses that, when taken in groups, represent information. However, even though a digital controller uses digital signals, some of the process conditions it monitors are represented by analog signals. This means that a digital controller must be able to convert digital signals into analog signals and analog signals into digital signals. Signal conversion is performed by devices called signal converters. Digital signals are converted into analog signals by digital to analog or D to A converters. Analog signals are converted into digital signals by analog to digital or A to D converters. In addition to controlling the values of process variables, process control systems also provide useful information about the processes they control. An advantage of digital control systems is that they can efficiently organize large quantities of data into readily understandable information displays. These displays typically provide information such as the values of process variables, the status of equipment in a system, and the overall condition of a facility.
Each control system in a facility has its own displays, which are designed for the particular process or processes that the system controls. However, most information displays can fit into one of three general categories, graphic displays, graphs, and lists. Here's a graphic display for a reactor system. The display uses symbols to represent devices or components and lines to represent pipes or flow paths. This display includes symbols that represent the reactor, a conveyor, a pump, and valves. Sometimes you may see flashing symbols and color changes on a graphic display. Flashing symbols and color changes usually indicate that a problem has developed. These signals immediately bring the problem to the operator's attention so that it can be corrected. Graphic displays may also use color changes in other ways. For example, color changes can be used to indicate whether valves are open or closed and whether fluids are flowing through pipes. Color changes can also indicate when a process vessel is full and ready for the next stage of a process. The second type of information display that we're going to look at is a bar graph. This is a bar graph that shows how the temperature inside a reactor changed during a one-hour period. The height of each bar indicates the temperature inside the reactor at a certain time. The changing heights of the bars indicate first a downward trend, then an upward trend, and finally a steady trend in the reactor's temperature. By analyzing trends, operators are often able to identify a developing problem. Identifying a developing problem as soon as possible lets an operator start taking corrective action to eliminate the problem before it can disrupt system operation. The third type of information display that we're going to look at is a list. Lists can provide information about the status of equipment. For example, a list can indicate whether or not pumps are operating or whether valves are open or closed. They can also indicate if equipment is ready to be operated or if it's out of service for maintenance or some other reason. Lists can also provide other information. For example, they can identify process variable set points and process variable values that activate alarms. Some lists indicate the active alarms in a system, while others show the values of a system's process variables. Lists of process variable values and active alarms are useful to operators and supervisors in spot checking a system's performance. Also, as a part of checking a system's performance, it may be necessary to review permanent records. Permanent records are produced by devices such as chart recorders and printers. Permanent records can be used to detect long-term trends in process alarm conditions and process variable values. Permanent records are also important as a way to document the history of process operations and to meet most audit requirements. Operators use keyboards and other input devices to interact with a digital control system. Although the arrangement and type of keys on a keyboard can vary, the keys can usually be divided into several functional groups. For example, the groups on this keyboard include operations keys, display keys, command keys, special function keys, and multifunction keys. The operations keys are used to run printers and other devices. The display keys are used along with number and letter keys to call up information displays. The command keys are used for operations such as changing process variable set points. The special function keys are used to start tasks that are performed frequently. Normally, Starting a particular task requires using a sequence of keystrokes. Using a single key is a much faster way to start the desired task. Multifunction keys are used in many systems. The functions of some types of multifunction keys can change depending on the operation that's being performed. Magnetic tapes and disks can be useful with control systems used in processes that produce two or more different products. To change from one product to another, it's sometimes necessary to change the values of many of the system's process variables and other operating conditions. To save time when many changes have to be made, the new values are provided on a magnetic tape or disk. The tape or disk is then used to put the new values into the control system. This procedure speeds up the changeover from one product to another. 
Sometimes, a digital control system uses a supervisory computer to control a process. The computer directs the activities of the system's process controllers by establishing set points. However, it does not directly control the values of process variables. In this topic, we took a broad view of several aspects of digital control systems. Now's a good time to try a few practice questions. A digital controller contains a computer. The controller can use the computer's memory to store information associated with several control loops. This allows the controller to be part of more than one control loop at a time. This is a bar graph that shows how the temperature inside a reactor changed during a one-hour period. The height of each bar indicates the temperature inside the reactor at a certain time. The changing heights of the bars indicate first a downward trend, then an upward trend, and finally a steady trend in the reactor's temperature. By analyzing trends, operators are often able to identify a developing problem. Operators use keyboards and other input devices to interact with a digital control system. A process control system consists of one or more process control loops. Each loop controls one process variable. To see how a process control loop operates, we can use this simplified illustration of a loop that controls the flow of a liquid through a pipe. This loop has components that perform the functions of the four basic elements of any process control loop. In this example, a flow transmitter performs the functions of the primary element and the measuring element. A digital controller and a current to pressure or I to P transducer perform the functions of the controlling element. In this example, the digital controller contains both A to D and D to A signal converters. Finally, a flow control valve performs the functions of the loop's final control element. For the most part, the devices in this loop operate as they would in any other process control loop. The main difference is in how the digital controller performs functions associated with the loop's controlling element. During operation, the flow transmitter senses the differential pressure across an orifice plate located in the pipe and converts it into an electrical analog signal that represents flow rate. This analog signal is then sent to the controller. Before the computer and the digital controller can use the flow rate signal, the signal must be converted from analog form into digital form. This signal conversion is performed by an A to D converter located in the controller. In order for the controller to use the digital flow rate signal, the signal's value must be stored in memory. As the controller's computer executes its control program, it retrieves the flow rate value and the flow rate set point value from memory. The computer then calculates the difference between the two values. This difference is the amount of error. The error value is used to calculate a corrective action value, which is then stored in memory. The computer retrieves the corrective action value from memory when it is needed, and the controller's D to A converter converts it from a digital signal into an analog signal. The analog signal, which is an electric current signal, is sent to the I to P transducer. The transducer changes the electric current signal into an air pressure or pneumatic analog signal. This change is necessary because the next component in the control loop is a pneumatic flow control valve. The pneumatic signal from the transducer positions the valve as necessary to ensure that the liquid's flow rate stays at set point. Every digital controller, regardless of its size or capability, contains a computer. And all computers use electronic memory circuits to store data. When the computer is used for process control, that data includes information related to process variables, as well as a control program and control blocks. A control block is a pre-programmed function or algorithm that a control program can use to help achieve control of a process variable. Control blocks are also commonly referred to as control slots or computational slots. A digital controller can use any of its control blocks any number of times to control any process variable or even to control several process variables at the same time. All that's required is an instruction in the control program that calls up the control block so that it can be executed. The values that the control block needs must be stored in memory from the appropriate inputs. 
A control program can link control blocks together in a variety of arrangements. Having control blocks linked together in a variety of arrangements provides flexibility for a digital controller. It also allows a digital controller to use fairly complex process control schemes. We can use this simplified illustration of a fluid heating system to see how this can be done. The main components in this system are a digital controller, a furnace, and three flow control valves. In this system, two fluids are combined and then heated in the furnace. The furnace gets its fuel through this line. Fluid flow is measured at these locations, and fluid temperature is measured here. The digital controller in this example directs the actions of the devices in three control loops at the same time. Two of the loops are fluid flow control loops, and the third loop is a fluid temperature control loop. In this example, analog input signals are continuously routed to the controller. Each signal is sampled periodically and converted from analog form to digital form. The digital values of these signals are stored in the controller's memory. Now, while a digital controller can control more than one loop, it cannot control all of them simultaneously. The sequence of the instructions in the control program dictates the order in which the loops are handled by the controller. To control any particular loop, the instructions in the control program call up various control blocks that perform the needed functions. The digital controller controls the two fluid flow control loops in this example by using the same control blocks at different times during the execution of the control program. The controller controls the temperature control loop by using some different control blocks because the control action needed for that loop is different from the control actions used for the two fluid flow control loops. After the appropriate control action is determined for a particular loop, the controller stores the corrective action value in memory. At the proper time, the digital signal representing the corrective action value is converted into an analog signal. Each signal is routed to the appropriate flow control valve. An important thing to remember about the example we just looked at is that the controller directs the actions that take place in each of the control loops. The controller handles each loop in turn as directed by its control program. However, the controller can cycle through the program and therefore control each loop so quickly that for all practical purposes, all of the loops are being controlled at the same time. In this topic, we went over the basic operation of a digital control loop and took a look at control blocks. Take the time now to try a couple of practice questions on this material. To see how a process control loop operates, we can use this simplified illustration of a loop that controls the flow of a liquid through a pipe. This loop has components that perform the functions of the four basic elements of any process control loop. In this example, a flow transmitter performs the functions of the primary element and the measuring element. A digital controller and a current to pressure, or I to P transducer, perform the functions of the controlling element. In this example, the digital controller contains both A to D and D to A signal converters. Finally, a flow control valve performs the functions of the loop's final control element. For the most part, the devices in this loop operate as they would in any other process control loop. The main difference is in how the digital controller performs functions associated with the loop's controlling element. Every digital controller, regardless of its size or capability, contains a computer. And all computers use electronic memory circuits to store data. When the computer is used for process control, that data includes information related to process variables, as well as a control program and control blocks. A control block is a pre-programmed function or algorithm that a control program can use to help achieve control of a process variable. Control blocks are also commonly referred to as control slots or computational slots.